All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back for game number two of the Stony Brook versus Alberta face-off. A pretty convincing win from Stony Brook in game number one. And based on some of the chatter going on there in the Twitch channel, it looks like, uh, especially in that mid lane, there was probably a pretty big skill disparity as well. The, uh, the Shadow Fiend being in the top 100 of his region. Wow, is he really top 100 of his Five of his region? Remaining. That is uh, rank 98 is what Kawaii Tarask is saying. Hmm, interesting. I, I, so that was the Shadow Fiend. I mean, that explains why the Shadow Fiend was able to so successfully catch up and, and take control of that lane after. I mean, we both agreed that was not the best lane matchup, and he also didn't necessarily get off to the best start. Uh, it is very difficult, that matchup. Uh, but he was a... Uh, really impactful player on the team and i guess we're understanding why now in the so draft we're probably going to see uh, the same bands same bands yeah so far i, I think you're correct and, and why not like they not only did the last game demonstrate that they should be worried about pushing and snowballing but it also demonstrated that they're not really prepared for it and yeah, the um, the Alberta or the the Stony Brook team was denied much of the the hard pushers, but uh, made do with what they had and and just really executed what seems to be their their preferred method. Yeah, and this is very important Five in CSL as opposed to professional level Dota or even semi professional aspiring professionals Three that really compete at. Back. A level where they're practicing together Dying all the time and able to counteract these strategies and csl man these guys and girls have class they have boyfriends and girlfriends they have jobs they have other stuff that is taking up their life and this is you know an extracurricular because of that they're not going to be able to practice as a team against like snowballing and scrims all the time and that's a strategy Five that is very difficult remaining. to execute into a Radiant team that has practiced against it and is used to it and is ready for it, but very hit. difficult to stop if you haven't. Man, this is something you can really tell when a team is extremely composed because how quickly their, their picks come out. And Alberta actually seems like they have a plan just as much. Stony Brick is going to go for that kind of crusty Clockwork Shadow Fiend opening. Um, you can roll... That's so disgusting. You can reliably get your, your souls pretty high. Um, I've seen a lot of games where mostly they'll get 15 souls, uh, but that is now capped at 12. And then the other thing to remember with this is that you are sacrificing a lot of bounties to get the Shadow Fiend a good start. Um, and then we typically see things... I've usually seen when they get this opening, a co-op or something like that gets picked up for the favorable matchup. Uh, that will then kind of undo everything that they did Five at the beginning. But as we know, the Shadow Fiend player, the, the skill level probably means that he's going to take over this mid lane even harder. So at the low, low cost of one clarity, you can actually get all of your bounties relatively safely and make this happen. You know, you Radiant do two in Fountain back. and then you walk out to the bounties. You do one while you're waiting there and then you clarity and you do one more while you're there. The, the Clockwork does not have a huge mana pool. And the clarity will mostly get him back up, at least back up to the position where he's able to drop at one cogs in defense if he needs it, until his natural mana regen gets him there. So for 50 gold, remaining. he's able to get 12 to 15 souls Five onto a Shadow Fiend. Remaining. Capped at 12 now. With his first, re or yeah, 12 now. And where he's going to get his first right click is going to make up that 50 gold. Yep. Right? Because he's pretty much guaranteed to make hits when he has an additional 12 damage. Uh, it's it's back. it's pretty ridiculous and i i ranted about this a little bit on on last week but just gonna throw it out there again you know shadow fiend is a hero who's entirely balanced around the idea that he has a slow start and then he gets going i don't think that capping this this manipulation at 12 really makes this even especially when you're talking about a skill differential like the one we're, we're talking here a top 100 region player on a shadow fiend pick. with a Dyer you know and who's also circumventing some of the underlying weaknesses of the hero is going to be very very difficult for alberta to respond to now a good thing you mentioned earlier is that um when you have a shadow shaman 
uh, you see it time and time again. Wards will get dropped, and then the team just gets pushed out and they get cleaned up. I don't see anyone for Stony Brook that, um, that can really hang out under the tower and ensure that they get that damage out. They've already got the Shadow Fiend, so maybe this is one of those times we'll see that position one Dragon Knight, because he's someone who loves standing under tower and will yeah, supplement their aggression. Potentially a Beastmaster offlane here could remaining. make that happen, assuming that that is a four spot clockwork. Uh, he's going to be able to remaining. take up a lot of that tower with just micromanagement of boars, as well as just his innate sort of takiness through the mid game. And he, he contributes a lot to push as well. I think either of those solutions would be adequate, although I wouldn't want to draft position one Dragon Knight yet because you don't see exactly where your opponents are going with their carry so far. Dire team pick. They're buying a lot of lockdown and it's going to be a gyrocopter. Someone I haven't been seeing, a, we, we don't see a lot this patch, but um, was actually in the epicenter, quali epicenter qualifiers, I believe on the finals day we saw him, and I believe that team won as well. Um, I think it was in the EU qualifiers. So that not no slouch of a region. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, Gyrocopter's played at high level Dota in, in pubs at least. Oh, pretty much the exact same amount as Dragon Knight, uh, as Monkey King, as Earth Spirit. They're all right within a couple of percent of a percentage points uh, next to each other. You know, the distinction there is that whereas Dragon Knight wins well over 50% of his games, like 51% of his games, Gyrocopter, I think at last check, win something like 46 percent 45 maybe even uh, he is a hero that struggles under pressure and i really like this beastmaster denial pick because that is what i would pick for offlane if i were stony brook right now and they are looking for their offlaner they've still got that under no never mind underlord is of course banned out that Ten seconds was probably remaining. a good ban from alberta yeah. because the underlord provided a lot of Five utility for stony remaining. brook um, a couple weird riffs, but, um, I mean, his ability to farm and, and the items he was able to pick up meant that they were sustained very, very well towards the end. Yeah, and, you know, those riffs that, that I was criticizing specifically, that's like splitting hairs. You know what I mean? They, they riffed it, it after they it got an It was objective. strange, yeah. But, I mean, it, with... It's, like, weird, but it didn't really hurt them that much. At a high-level game, it would have been, like, like a professional-level game, it would have been mind-blowing that they riffed it there, but... At this level where you know that your opponents aren't maximizing every inch of farm space and you did just fluster them quite a bit, just going back to the pound is fine. As long as you're not doing it too much. You would uh, you would say they rustled their jimmies? I would say jimmies were rustled, my friend. All right, so I don't know. What are you thinking in terms of potential offlaners here <sighs> for Stony Brook? They, they presumably do want somebody who's going to be able to Dyer hang out under tower. They didn't pick up the Faceless Void. They can, uh, I think maybe they just aren't gonna put too much into that Hang Under Tower. I think a Dark Seer here so that they can get Call Down and Requiems into it, uh, as well as pull people into Cogs would be, or, or you know, center people maybe on the Clockwork and, and see if he can get them in the Cogs, but um, that would be pretty and safe. And then Juggernaut me. getting picked up here for Alberta. That's that's one of those kind of staple safe Five laners right now. He's been very, very, uh, not, if not overpowered, but very balanced for a while, and, and we've seen him what quite a bit. A, a bristleback or a timber saw? You already have the clock timber. in the Shadow Shaman to, I, to add some control. I, I, one I, issue with timber saw is that he might struggle into an OD with all that intelligence strip. Yes. Um, um, but no, I, I mean, I like it. Yeah, he's he's very powerful. If he can get his, uh, if he can get his bloodstone up, then even if he loses a bunch of intel he'll still have plenty of mana regen um and the bristleback i i don't know i just i haven't it's been a long time since i've uh, i've seen a bristleback impress me in a game right yeah that's, it, it uh, seems like that's it's the same old like story that. always oh baby that's a hero that okay i this will be interesting because i've seen this a couple other times recently in csl wherein a team picked an offlane Enigma that ended up transitioning to jungle or or ended up like putting their clockwork offlane. In fact, I think I saw this exact same situation. Shadow Fiend Clockwork Enigma, where the clockwork ended up going into the offlane and the Enigma ended up going to the jungle and they just succumbed to pressure. Now that said, Stony Brook have proven that they really like to burst out of the mid game. Uh, 
so presumably they should be coming into this with a good sense of where the pressure is going to be coming from and and you know where the threat is yeah in stony brook um they want to be careful when trying to initiate with the black hole because there's obviously a quite a number of ways to stop it here ice path just being one of the one of the great ones and then astral even though it may or may not have the range but the beastmaster roar um all all ways that they'll be able to stop it and even bkb piercing on it with the beastmaster as long as he doesn't get caught but they only have one way to stop it through a bkb so there are some so of those games a way to stop it without a bkb on almost everybody so there's the juggernaut's the only one that you can afford to miss and you can't afford to miss the juggernaut because the whole point is to hold him still <laughs> yes Oh, you basically need five man black holes every time, but they're unlikely to get extended use of that ultimate. Uh, alternatively, they could use it in, in the, you know, the newbie Chinese fashion where they just use it to just pick off a solo juggernaut and don't try to hold it for these big team fights and then try to win a, a four on 4.5 fight after that with the Enigma basically contributing much less, but your opponents are down to carry. Okay, so while we're getting into this game, I just want to do a little bit of house cleaning here. We haven't necessarily done so yet. And do a shout out to our sponsors. You know, these are college players that are playing for fun with their college friends, with people from their schools. They're playing for scholarships. They're really helping to normalize esports, not, not just at the pro level, but as a hobby, as a cultural movement. It's, a, I think, a very good cause for sponsorship money. And Twitch has always been there for us. They've been there over the last couple seasons that I've been there. They've been extremely supportive throughout not only our live lands, but also in making sure that we're able to just keep this production going from PAX East to PAX West. We would not be what we are here at CSL without Twitch. We just want to give them our most sincerest gratitude. Make sure that you do look out. Uh, tell them on social media that you appreciate their support of CSL. And, of course, look out for Twitch student opportunities as well. And we do have a Discord community. If you want to be, you know, there chatting with Riverex and myself and the admins and the other players, really just get into the community, maybe find a team of your own or just find pub the partners, people begins. with similar interests. Uh, go ahead and type exclamation point Discord, I believe, will fortune. give you the Discord address there in the Twitch channel. All right, vision. back to our regular scheduled programming. And we are back. It looks like it's going to be fairly standard bounties. Actually, Jug getting a double bounty there. Very, very happy start for him. And boy, Clockwork is getting some damage here. Yeah, he's quite deep right now. Dual Breath already picks up on Jakiro, so he probably doesn't know that he could safely TP if he wanted to, but he's going to be just fine and walk away. He might know now that the Sand King popped the Clarity and is hanging out here. Presumably that's because the Sand King wants another Sand King. Uh, but meanwhile, in the mid lane, the Jakiro's going to come down here and move on to the Shadow Fiend. They're going to just narrowly miss this kill. Not sure what Ling thinks that he's doing here. He's not likely to contribute very much. Not the, the clockwork as well. <laughs> it's three man mid. That's not the best use of cogs. I the Jakiro's not a mana dependent hero. The damage is not impactful. I don't I don't know that you really want to be harassing a Jakiro with your cogs at this stage in the game. Might as well save the mana. So the Enigma, of course, um, with the Denier, I don't know what to oh, describe. Oh, bottom. This could be a first blood one way or the other. The Beastmaster's going to be forced back. And no Shackle, surprisingly, coming out. I guess the Gyropop is hoping he doesn't want to engage. Ling is just going to up the threat of the Shackle. May force Beastmaster back. No! Beastmaster is just going to go face first into him. There they go. There's the shackles. But Gyrocopter, he didn't really want. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That was a little slower than I would have expected. The communication there could have been better. Gyrocopter think... did end up getting that, but that was a lot riskier than it needed. I think Gyro was doing everything he could to not have to peel off the lane. <laughs> <laughs> I want these little ones. Don't bring that big one over here. And yeah, Enigma is solo off laning. I mean, I think this is better than what I saw some other teams try to do with the Enigma, as I described during the draft. Ooh, Shadow Fiend goes down in the mid. 
Yeah, we did see this exact same Shadow Fiend player also go down around this exact same time last game, and he was able to get the space in order to not only catch up, but thrive. I think last time it, it took the rotation of a number of supports. This time, this is going to be OD solo. Yeah. Uh, I mean, OD has a lot more kill potential than, than Queen of Pain, potentially, on this here. Queen of yeah. Pain... She just has the harass potential. Exactly. She needs to whittle you down first, whereas I guess Odin does too, but he's able to, to make it so that you cannot spam out your shadow races. He's able to, to really damage your potential in the lane. I guess I take that back. Queen of Pain and Odin maybe have similar kill potential, but it just works out that way. Now that I'm thinking about it. I don't, I don't want to overstate it situationally as a general rule. Clockwork did a great job. He uh, holds the lane up in his cogs to make sure that his Shadow Fiend gets a good recovery position. And then even uh, gives him a couple denies there on the cogs. Yeah, that's... Every little bit helps when you die as a Shadow Big Fiend. As I mentioned oh. during the draft. Oh, boy. Dire. Alberta is very deep right now. The Jakiro is going to be the one caught. There we go. Battery Assault pecking away at him. Zingling and Celatos coming together like the team they are good rotations all the way around shadow shaman now moving into the mid he does have a smoke purchase but not on his person and it is not night yet they honestly they should wait they should wait but they're not going to and they probably will be seen here they're gonna try to wait till night falls i actually don't think that they got seen over there on that cliff yet oh he's just uh Courier comes and delivers. No, they did definitely get seen when they went up onto that cliff, so. OD's out in the river, though. They just drop a ward. This is this is what we saw. The This exact same thing happened from, from SBU last game, and it just killed them. There they go. They're trying to go for it. Shackle's going to come out. No. There oh, Ling is getting it, but it's under the tower. He's going to eat so much from this. They do get FXF in the cogs now. Dark Reader going to get some raises. Oh, there we go. I can't believe they got that kill. That, <laughs> it took a while to set up for sure. That that honestly should not have happened, probably. As you saw the Shadow Shaman coming in. Uh, oh, he does not have a level of imprisonment yet. He's only level four. Never mind. That's a really easy kill to get without a level of imprisonment. And yeah, some pinks were going out on this Enigma, and there was some posturing on him, but they haven't been able to do anything to him yet. Yeah, that's interesting. With no defensive supports available, not picking up that level of imprisonment into a Shadow Shaman Clockwork. I mean, Shadow Shaman, not the biggest roamer, but Clockwork is going to be in your shit. He's now moving down onto this bottom lane where the Beastmaster has been uh, holding his own after that death just trying to get his levels honestly kind of struggling to even do that oh now they go on the enigma but not able to get him just tp straight out what a player a couple of idolons will go down here at least that's a about 70 gold so something gained not not only that but now they need to play and there they go Silitos coming around onto the beastmaster Ooh, he's gonna try and use the cog there we go use the cog it's a deny zero, eating a lot of damage, but they've got a full creep wave with them, so that rocket barrage didn't do everything that they wanted it to. Now Mastery chasing them down, they get him. Clockwork, meanwhile, went down anyway to, it looks like a last hit, no. Oh, was that Axis at the last minute? Uh, no, I think that that was just a last Creeps. tower hit and it gave Something, yeah. If I had to guess. Yeah, I, there was a miscommunication there again between the clockwork and the gyrocopter because the clockwork opened up the cogs to get out and the gyrocopter tried to get in they were not able to synergize that up and ended up costing them a, a trade instead of a free kill oh uh, sand king could be going down no they have no raises a couple more shots ling no mana for shackle he can make his way away but dark uh but shadow fiend is quite quick burrow strike not for another 25 mana another right click they've got it Dyer's middle tower is yeah, a uh, great position for them to find themselves in. For uh, a 6 2 start with an Enigma offlane is much better than you would expect or hope for our Radiant team. And no deaths on the Enigma either. Even a kill. Enigma's yeah. Right here. Oh, he's going to kill this Jakiro. 
The Eidolon's doing quite a lot of damage. No, he's got to be careful. Jing, oh, he comes kind in the Juggernaut. He's doing a lot of damage. There it goes, the, the Black Hole coming out. He's got the kill on the Jakiro and even going to turn around onto the Juggernaut as well. You cannot underestimate how much damage these Eidolons do at early levels. Yeah, especially if you know that your opponent has an unused black hole. Just trying to juke him in the trees is not going to be that effective. Getting another kill onto the Beastmaster as well out of this. Yeah, Stony Brook, uh, once again, just running over all of their lanes. Yeah, and in this case, they are in a much, much better position to take momentum. You know, before they had to do this Sanjin Yasha build on, onto two heroes in order to make sure that they had the mid-game cheap advantage in order to leverage. And that is a much riskier position to be in than moving into an Enigma mid-game, a Shadow Fiend mid-game as well. That is going to be a drums on the Shadow Fiend, and then he might end up going to Sanjin Yasha again because it worked out for him before and they have more control this time. But also the Gyrocopter here. Oh man. Sanji hanging around, him. hoping to get this bounty rune. It could cost him his life, absolutely will. He's gonna burrow strike through the same. No! Is he gonna make it away? They've got, got there we go. Damage. Even despite the nerf on this ether shock, that will be enough to get him. There was the rocket as well from the clockwork, so I don't think that Shadow Fiend was gonna be getting away. Uh oh, Shadow Fiend gets caught in the ice path now. They've got a dual breath on him. One more shot will be more than enough. TP's not going to be there to save him. Ling. A does very timely best. hex. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that double damage. There's not a lot you're going to do. Uh, still no astral imprisonment level, but with the control that comes from the Jakiro, I don't know that there's anything that they can do. Yeah, he did a great job using that ice path basically like a fissure blocking off the ramp. Let's see up top, the Enigma is getting himself into trouble trying to steal a staff. But he's just wow. going to be able to make his way out of there. Eidolon's going to take quite a lot of damage. They get the Malathus out onto Sand King. Sand King Burrow strikes away now. Juggernaut's looking pretty low. They've got to be careful. We'll be able to get that one last creep there. They did disrupt the stack at least a little bit. Yeah, I think Juggernaut got most of those plus the Eidolons, but that Centaur Stomp saved the Enigma's life. Oh, they're pinging up the shrine? No, okay. They don't know they're shrining, they're just calling for the shrine. Yeah, even if they did, I don't know that there's anything they could do. Still 70 seconds without a black hole. No blink dagger, obviously. And there is a, an Omni Slash available on the Juggernaut, so fighting near their opponent's shrine would be really devastating. Smoke up in the mid. They're hoping to find Shadow Fiend here, but he is out. Oh, they did this last game, too. Yep. Having a st oh, are they going to hang out too long this time? Yeah, they absolutely are going to. Because Shadow Fiend does this rotation. This player does this rotation where he does a tri-corner. And then comes back. So he gets four camps before he goes oh, back. But they're they're going deep for him this time around. The smoke will pop on Jakiro. He knows that someone's around here. They're going to find the Shadow Fiend. Can they get the Ice Path on him? They use the Omni Slash. They're going to try and block him up. Ice Path. He's juking it. No, he's not going to catch him with it. And now they're just out of there. TP's coming in, they get the Sand King, and now they're in such a bad position for this. Jakiro gonna be the next shot. It looks like Juggernaut should be able to make it out of here just fine. Ray's going to Dark Raider. Absolutely happy. It looked like it was gonna start so well, but Stony Brick, of course, on the ball with their rotations, immediately punished that deep dive. They need to be landing that Ice Path right out of the Omni Slash to give the Juggernaut a chance for a follow-up Blade Fury. If they can't get that, they're not going to be able to kill any hero with substantial health. Dyer's top Another smoke up here from Alberta. This is unexpected for sure. You don't usually go smoke right in for another smoke after you fail on a smoke. Maybe if you succeed. They do have Roar available on Beastmaster. This is a perfect time to go on the Shadow Fiend, but he, he decides to go around instead of just face roll at him. And he caught... Who did he... He got Sand King with that smoke, didn't he? Oh, no, Juggernaut. Juggernaut just chose to farm with it. Interesting. Uh, yeah, the, the smoke usage there. Not ideal. Yeah. And, you know, this is a stage in the game where those are a high premium. This is the stage where your opponents are probably going to be moving their wards around in such a way as it makes it difficult to predict where they're going to be able to see you and it's also where people are going to be the most likely to be vulnerable right they're starting to push their waves out to their opponent's side they're starting to maybe split push down towers a little bit that is the moment where your smoke is going to have the optimum impact because you're going to be able to catch people off guard 
They're just gonna try to push this top tower instead and open up space in, uh, presumably mid. But meanwhile, speaking of space, the Gyrocop has 90 HP last hits and 21 denies and just knocked down tier one completely uncontested. Not to mention the fact he's got two kills and three assists. Wow, the gyrocopter actually has pretty yeah. close to double the juggernaut's number. Oh boy, he's, he's sitting at about seven thousand. The juggernaut's sitting at about four thousand. So that's trouble ahead. You know, watch that space. This gyro uh, gyrocopter is going to be able to push like a monster here pretty soon too. He is going for a Sanjin Yasha build, I assume. We're going to see the same out of the Shadow Fiend. And as soon as we see those items out, it's going to be Good Night Lucy, just like last game. Yeah, their, their, their power spike at that point is just so far beyond what Alberta is capable of handling. And Alberta is not getting any use out of any of these relations. They didn't even take that tower top. They have three heroes roaming around getting nothing done for the last three or four Dyer's minutes. Top and taking a look, I mean, Sand King's still level 4. Sure, the Shadow Shaman's level 4 as well, but at least the Shadow Shaman team is farming. And they're going to trade a top tower for nothing. Now an engagement down here as Clockwork is going to move in. There's no hope for the Beastmaster to fall down. Is there, and there's going to be additional damage coming out into the Shakira. Shakira's going to try to get away, but the Masked Man is going to allow the gap to be closed. And that is a 2 for nothing trade. And still, the tower remains. Even Enigma pushing the top lane right now. Jesus. Yeah, this is a very worrisome moment if you are. Wow, we're almost to a 10,000 net worth lead at 13 minutes. That is one of the largest leads I've seen this early in the game. I think 12 minutes was uh, was my record for seeing that 1k per minute lead that is really insurmountable. So back when we tracked these things in the Dota Stats community, a 10,000 lead at 15 minutes in Pro Dota would have been over a 98-6. OD getting caught there in the, in the top, run down by an entire team. Yeah. I will say that those stats are pre-6.82 when a lot of these rubber band mechanics were, were amplified and since honed in. So it's probably not that bad, but I would still say at the pro level, you're still talking probably a 96% chance lead, if not more. Yeah, where they have that really, oh man, just taking up the jungle, taking up the leech and stack for themselves. We've got a hook shot out, it's gonna connect onto the Jakiro. Jakiro caught inside of Cogs and just run down by Stony Brook. Once again, uh, Alberta needs to Get everyone up. Uh, they can't even team fight here, can they? They're, they're this no. black hole. It's just such a menace. Enigma picking up that hand of Midas before he even goes for the blink. He has the money for blink, but looks like he's just saving for the BKB to buy it all at once. Interesting. Yeah, and why not, right? He's got. He's under no pressure right now. There has only been the one black hole so far, which is quite surprising. They only started turning on the, the, the five-man Dota a few minutes ago. It, I don't really know what you do to push off this attack as well. The, the, they honestly, I don't think they needed to drop the wards there, other than the fact that they're trying to force out of the state. I, I think they just want to claim this, go bot, get that last tier two, and then end it all in one high ground. Well, speaking of mistakes, the clockwork goes in a little deep there. The, the gyrocopter trying to come around the other side, I really do think that they were trying to force a retreat where they can pick somebody off and then push into the high ground. Right? Like a good clockwork hook onto a treating Jakiro might force a bad fight behind the tower, and the wards might have been intended to be the pressure to start that chain reaction. I, I will say U of A responded to that really gracefully. Now, is it enough to save them the game? No, they've got a long road ahead of them, but it's at least good to see that they're at least to some degree keeping their heads about them. The progression of the net worth advantage is at least stagnating a little bit here for uh, for Stony Brook, but still quite a large gap that they need to recover. 
And we'll need to recover with almost no map control. Yeah, no, but on the plus side, if they do start to recover a little bit, they're going to shoot into the lead because they still have a lot of towers to claim while their opponents are running out. So if they do start to recover right now, it's going to be from winning fights, which means a lot of that gold is still going to be claimable on the map from these towers. Uh, the only downside to that is they need to win fights before they buy items uh, or before they catch up in items, which is always harder, obviously. Here we go. BKB getting delivered out to Enigma right now. And he's got it. Yeah, that helps a lot. Now they're going to be able to drop a lot of black holes and engage on these high grounds as long as they get the boost from the black hole. Or if he's dead, there's nothing that can be done. Ooh, hook shot. It's gonna catch the OD. He's just taken away with that. Oh, battery assault. Dark Raider gonna come out of the Astral just in time. Throw some nice raises out and make sure they claim that OD. Battery assault really, really good into that OD because I'm pretty sure that that is a like 1.2 second cast time on Astral Imprisonment and he's not, he really has no defense at all instead he also has a long base attack time or base attack animation excuse me so uh, the clockwork really able to shut down an od if he does manage to get a solo battery assault onto him but what are you doing to this gyrocopter man he's now a past eleven thousand net worth what are you doing to him practically nothing <laughs> hope pray i guess they they really they've got no way to engage on the gyrocopter they've got no way to close the gap on the gyrocopter they've got no way to force their way past the clockwork so yeah when in these fights they're going to be able to They're take oh jakiro he's gonna use the tp he makes it out that's good at, at least they're not bleeding out unnecessary deaths here a juggernaut actually going to try to go in on to Ling down here. Ling not realizing it. Does have the Hex. Will Gets spend the Hex. It hex DP. He's fine. No way to stop that. Yeah. I, you really don't want to blow that Omni Slash on a TPing target. He might have had enough damage to get that kill on Omni Slash after the Hex. But it would have been really, really close and probably still not. Uh, so it was, it was the right call to just let him TP. So uh, Shadow Fiend's not going for the Sanjin Yasha this time around. He will be building the BKB at this point. And he does have a uh, Yules this time around. Okay, this is this is more, Much more typical standard. And, and I think better, honestly, for this type of game because they're in such a lead. They really don't need to pad the mid game at all. You know, 13,000 net worth sub 20 minutes. And there's still a tier two to claim. Oh, they see the OD. There they go. Oh, he's going to get the banishment onto the clockwork. But the Requiem blow. Oh, no. They're not going to get enough damage on him thanks to that uh, four staff. But here comes a... Oh, the roar goes out onto the Enigma. The Enigma now going to try and put some damage in. They lose the clockwork but claim the OD. Jing trying to get the damage out, but without a blink dagger, he's not very mobile. Gets caught out. And the Shadow Fiend even going to go down now. This is the exact kind of thing that, uh, that Alberta was hoping for. They'll lose the Sand King as well, but huge targets claimed for them. Not the Gyro, once again. Yeah, there's, I mean, they can't, they can't do anything about the Gyro. Not to mention the fact that the Gyro didn't even need to be there, right? So yeah, that's a three for two trade. Yeah, that's a, a, a nice little movement in favor of our Dyer side. But they also lost their last outer tier tower during that, and that wasn't even a fair engagement. That was a three on five. The Enigma has more net worth than the Juggernaut now, by the way. <laughs> Ow. Oh boy. Granted, he has a hand of Midas, but still. That that shouldn't be happening. The Juggernaut went for a Shadow Blade, which means he needs to be getting ganks. This is a strange time in the game. To be this is, building, yeah. completing that. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm not exactly sure when he completed it, to be honest. I, I kind of ignored the Juggernaut for a while because he was wasn't so low on that as much as we yeah. were hoping. Yeah. But he definitely contributed that after the fact the Juggernaut got out of control. 
Oh, he should be able to tell that this is the real Juggernaut because of the spell usage. And they can now close Burrow the Strike on a gyro. They're going to collapse on him. They get the roar. That is going to go through the BKB. He is stunned up. Plenty of damage. One more shot's going to do it. And OD is so happy to get that. They get an Astral onto the Shadow Shaman as well. They drop the Macro Pyre. They're going to commit everything. Make sure they get this. Little by little, they're coming back into the game. Looking at the net worth, it's tipping back in their favor for the first time. Not in, in not the actual numbers, but as far as the uh, the direction. Momentum. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. This. I mean, this is going to end up putting them sub 10k for the first time since. Before. 14. Yeah, 14 minutes. Okay. They get the Enigma as well. These targets are worth a lot of money too. They might actually be able to shoot through two towers here. If they get down as well. That was a huge error. Being up there without vision, without allies, support, and into I, what I think is a revealed Shadow Blade from the Juggernaut. There's really just no excuse for that. There's no, there's no reason for it. Now, as long as Alberta doesn't try and take this high ground. They're going to try to chip it. They, they, they want to force a buyback on the Will they know? He actually doesn't have it. He bought out to get his Blink Dagger. They're going to get a Tier 3 out of it, though. Here we go. They get a hook shot in, and now they're caught out by the top. Gyrocopter beaten away. They dropped the Serpent Wars on the high ground. There goes a kill on the Beastmaster. They could be able to get Sandy. They don't have any vision for No, there we go. They're going to be able to just raise him up. They got a Tier 3 out of it, though. That's actually a pretty good trade. If you're in their position, you're not going to win another fight or you're not likely to be handed another victory on a fight anytime in the near future. You're still 9k behind, which means on average you're about 75% of an item behind on, on your heroes and you're probably more on your cores. Uh, so you want to make sure that you're taking as much advantage as possible. Now they have the opportunity to, anytime they're able to find momentum, they can immediately go to Shrine, no matter what the Creep Equilibrium looks like. And I think that's worth an offering in this Now, that they're also trading out Roshan is less than oh, ideal. Oh, Omni-Slash coming out on Enigma. They're not going to have Enigma to defend this black hole. They're all coming around. Are they going to try and stop this Roshan? Oh, Stony Brook just handing the reins over. Alberta here. They're gonna get some raises into the shadow feed. The astral comes out and does a significant amount of damage. Now they've got to keep this momentum up and this pressure up. They got a kill. It's a buyback on the gyrocopter. They're gonna be able to claim the clockwork as well. Forcing two buybacks, and this is where they want it. They know they need to hold this Roshan. They're gonna be able to get this shadow shaman chased down by the juggernaut. Roshan is pretty low, so once juggernaut gets in, they're gonna try and go for it. Stony Brick desperate to stop them from claiming it. Now the call down comes into Beastmaster. Beastmaster gets pulling up. Jakiro, oh, he drops the ice path, but isn't able to catch anyone with it. Now the hook shot forward. They claim the Aegis that's on Masquerade. Even getting the Jakiro as he tries to force after the high ground. And here we go. They're really turning it around. But they did recover roughly 10k net worth in probably the last three to four minutes. Yeah, this puts them in a really rough position, but they have demonstrated that they're able to find fights and honestly we've been seeing a lot sloppier play from SBU than we had seen up to this point. Yeah, Stony Brook definitely handing some of those over. Um, even if even if uh, Alberta has to buy back right now, they've done a significant amount of ep economic recovery. Oh, even finding themselves a Shadow Shaman. Which is big. The wards did not get dropped there. And there's no way Shadow Shaman's going to get out here in time for this push. Now they have to defend, but they do have the Enigma this time around. Hopefully not going to get taken down in the back line. And we'll have a black hole, the threat of a black hole for this fight. So I want to point out that the Gyrocopter bought back there and then tp to his mid rack. Presumably because he must have forgotten that, that his entire mid lane had got him pushed in. When instead he could have, you know, TP'd out to this shrine, TP'd out to that shrine, and then just walked it. It was, still would have been closer uh, to, to the fight either way. Maybe he was just shooting from the hip, trying to TP from the uh, the shrine, and it just happened. That the, yeah, it must have been. But either way, I mean, that hurt them for sure. They, they If he had gotten there a little bit earlier, they might have been able to clean up one more kill there. Though, you and know, they, they are sitting on top of the Aegis. And it goes working on a um, on a Lincoln Sphere, which will make the black hole cancel even more difficult now.
pretty much yeah, impossible. I don't know what they do. Yeah, they, they, they really are unlikely to have any way to get into that black hole. They only... I guess they could lift the Lincolns with a Force Staff or a Liquid Fire. A Astral Imprisonment. A Burrow Strike or an Omni Slash. So they've got four ways to lift that other than Primal War. So they need two heroes outside of it. One of whom has to be able to lift that. And the Enigma needs to have his behavior. That's yeah. a lot of this. Yeah. And the, actually, the Omni Slash no longer mini stuns the first target. Oh, that's right. So it's not going to cancel. So yeah, they have even fewer options. Uh, 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 which is something that I knew, but keep forgetting, and Goldie had to remind me last week of that as well. Oh, Lots of damage going into the clockwork. There they go, the black hole. It's only going to catch the Beastmaster, but it's a little bit for now. Now getting themselves the same King Kill as well. Juggernaut taking quite a lot of damage. He used the Omni Slash. Let's go to the Gyro. Gyro will be back for a second life. The Requiem goes out. It doesn't connect with anyone, actually. And this is this going to be enough? They force Stony Brick out. Buybacks come out, fly from Alberta. They do catch a Vanish, and the Shadow Shaman is going to get caught in the Ice Path. Start to blow him out. They get something for the retreat. Might want to look to go for more. Shadow Blade is ready for Juggernaut, but Shadow Fiend is already going to be out of here. Just chasing down Enigma. Can they find Enigma? He uses his, uh, his Midas. And now Juggernaut's ready to go onto him. We get a couple shots. There we go. Malefice everything. Or Malefice won't be able to do anything. They get the Enigma as well. Alberta this time is doing a good job of mitigating, like gaining what they can and mitigating what they lose. And meanwhile, in the bottom lane, they almost get a Radiant uh, Ranged Barracks just from Creep Push. Right? So, like, they actually got about as much as they lost there, not even including the fact that they, they stripped away Aegis. Not even including the fact that they're about to get a tier one. Uh, they're, they're putting themselves in a pretty good position. Granted, I would still say that they're underdogs in this match, but they're putting themselves in a position where any fight could be the fight that turns us. Absolutely. Buybacks, a, a, a ton of thrown out have, been, have gone out recently. Actually, yeah, Gyro and Clock, no buybacks available right now. If they just get one good pick on the Gyro especially, they have a, a crack at some more high ground damage. If they get a pick on a gyro in gyro's base, they are very something. likely to be able to do that. Yeah. And if they do that, something has gone very wrong for Stony Brook. Stony Brook really shouldn't be in these positions where the gyrocopter's at risk of dying at all. Uh, he's died twice now. Neither of them really felt necessary, to be honest, but especially that first one, which was the can of worms that made this a competitive game. Smoke out from Stony Brook. Here they go. This is kind of the things that we expect from them. I know this is the perfect time. With Alberta thinks they're pinned in their base and aren't expecting them in the lane, so they'll really catch them with the pa their pants down if they can get them here. Oh, they saw these wards go down, though. They know they're smoked. Oh, Stony Brook. Stony Brook not able to find that opportunity, but that's all right. They've got plenty more opportunities in the bag. As long as they've got that black hole up, as long as they've got the wards up, any time that they take a fight could be the game losing fight for uh, for U of A. Here they go. Oh, are they going to catch Gyro? No, Gyro is running away so fast. Yeah, I've got an slash out onto him. He actually goes down. No buyback on Gyro. 90 seconds. The lanes are pushed so well in their favor. Only the Sand King getting caught in the black hole right now. They got the Macro Fire out, doing so much damage. Are they going to keep the chase down? Yes, they drop the Sanity's Eclipse as well. Beastmaster chasing him down. Enigma just barely making it out of there, dodging the axe. They still get the Clockwork. They get the Shadow Shaman. No buybacks available on Stony Brook. Yeah, this is at least one lane of Rax. Lanes are out pretty deep, so they do have a bit of time, but it won't one save them forever. Well, Gyrocopter and no Black Hole on the defense. Also, no Requiem on the defense. Yeah, there's, it's going to take a little while for them to get up there, but they have two lanes with Bear Barracks, and in fact, you know, one of them only needs to be hit twice. So, this, this should be... Probably a full lane, if not two full lanes. Yeah. 
They're gonna drop the Midnight Pulse to do as much as they can, but Juggernaut, oh, he's just doing so much damage, they've got the Liquid Fire, and then of course the Beastmaster army is here. They go so for the melee it. and just immediately rotate very wise there, so they're gonna be able to get two melee racks. And this puts a lot of pressure. Oh, zing! They don't even have a black hole, but they could be able to clean up the enemy here. No, they get a hex out on the Juggernaut. They did use his BKB, though. Very great to have. And BKB is a flat cooldown now. Right. Yeah, and uh, the, the other thing to keep in mind is that uh, we were talking about the Omni Slash. I, I did notice, yes, the Juggernaut Omni Slash does still lift the Link. Oh, just the Link. Yeah, you're correct. Uh, call down's going to come now. This is Alberta probably needed to back here. They yeah, definitely needed to back, back, yeah. Um, so they are just going to get dismantled here in Stony Brook's base. They don't have a lot of buybacks themselves. Um, yeah, this could be probably. just... Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Stony Brook now going to be able to just turn this around, do significant base damage. If they don't end this game outright, they're going to be able to recover all of the, uh, the uh, you know, just vent a lot of the pressure that got applied to them with losing their barracks. And that said, if they don't just straight up end the game right now, the top tower is backdoor protection vulnerable. Like, it, even with backdoor protection up, that tower can go down to one hit from Juggernaut. Uh, but, you know, they didn't Dyer's need that tower. They put themselves attack. in a very strong position prior to that tower. And now they've just... I, I don't know. It's just another case of U of A overreach. Not understanding the yeah, and apologies when you were uh, mentioning earlier about the uh, using the Omni Slash. I thought you were specifically saying to cancel the black hole, but no, you're right. Yeah, the Lincolns, it will continue. I, 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 I picked up once I was thinking about it where the miscommunication lies. I just wanted to make sure that that ended up clear to the viewers because yes. uh, if we're confused, they probably are confused, and uh, that's that's not ideal for anybody. But then we just end up in a, a turbine of sadness. <laughs> wow, really? Only one? Only one! one? Interesting. With Black Hole available, too. They back up before Juggernaut comes up. Maybe they have said, hey, guys, we've been sloppy enough. And really, with buybacks are probably still down at this point. They don't want to just risk getting run over again. Because at that yeah. point, they absolutely lose. They would be done. And with the Gyrocopter, two lanes of supers isn't actually that big of a deal. He should be able to clear it. The Shadow Fiend, not the best at dealing with supers. They, they have just enough health that the Shadow Raises aren't really that useful anymore. But he's able to hold a lane slowly while the Gyrocopter shoots through the other way. They didn't ward Roche on the way back, by the way. They have wards on lane. They just didn't see fit to drop them. They do Which know this is happening weird. with the Flare going out, but I don't think they're in any position. Oh, it's taking a bit, especially if these bashes come out. Now, here they go. They should be able to get it. Oh, no. Black Hole's going to be here in four seconds. Here it comes. It goes in. No. But Dark Raider jumps in. He's got his BKB flying. Kaio snatches the Aegis because it was Stony Brook that gets the kill. Now, the, once again, the Black Hole only going onto the Sand King. They almost get Xing with the Omni Slap. But they're trading away right now. They get the Beastmaster Sand King are down. But it's in response to the Enigma and Clockwork now. Putting damage to the Juggernaut. Juggernaut goes down. He's going to respawn in just a moment. No Omni Slash. So he has to be very careful. Hit Ling. He's immediately going to follow up with a spin. So he can't get CC'd. Hex out onto OD. And then the Aether Shock into Jakiro. Jakiro should go down. Oh, but Masquerade just walks for a second onto that Ice Path. And he will go down to the Dual Breath. They get the Jakiro. Now lots of damage coming out into Ling. And that's four down on the side of Stony Brook. Dark Raider? Oh, he cancels the CP. Interesting. Didn't need cancel. to do that. I think he, he thought it was about to cancel anyway. He makes so, it away, though. Tier 4 is taking a little bit of damage here on the Dire side. Only really the, the... With all these buybacks up, I don't think that they're going to be able to capitalize on this, but they could probably force buyback. They're going to they're gonna get the Tier 3... Oh, actually, no, they learned. They learned from last time. They will okay, back so that with was the buyback. A, ironically, this time, they are too conservative. He should have split his Manta and sent the Elite. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely agreed. Yeah, he has his, his Manta's off cooldown. One hit is all this takes. 28 yeah. HP. And he also has a Shadow Blade, and his opponents don't have a gem, right? So it's like Split Manta, Shadow Blade, run away. But 
you know what? Live, live to capitalize another day. I, uh, they are already able to go down and chew this last remaining shrine. The tower itself isn't actually providing anything of value at this point. It'll get like two auto attacks off on a creep wave before it goes down to a catapult if that creep wave pushes up. So it's not, and, and the gold at this stage in the game is pretty negligible to be quite honest. It would be nice to close out a couple of items, but they need to say buy back anyway, so it's probably not going to be the make or break. Yeah, looking at this net worth chart, that lead that Stony Brook had and just pissed away. It almost went even at one point. Look at that. We almost went to zero. Easily just yeah. barely a 2k lead at that point. It We're really does come back to, to what I was saying before, which is if you give a mouse a cookie. Oh, we're going to actually see this gyrocopter get moved on here. Is there going to be counter initiation? Watch out, ready. Start damaging into the OD. OD pops the BKB because they're going to start right clicking away now. They turn it onto the clockwork. They're able to clean him up. Now that's going to cost them the BKB. No, OD jumps up to the top. Now, Dark Green, they're going to turn it around on him. The Omni Slash is going out into the enemy. And he's fueled up. He has his, he has his black hole, but not has does not have an opportunity to use it. Now they've got a shackle out under the Beastmaster, but once again, Alberta just running down the rest of these Stony Book heroes. They're going to even drop the Serpent Wards as a death where there's no chance they stay here to fight. So the Serpent Wards are somewhat wasted. Burrow Strike through, they're going to be able to catch that, ma uh, the, uh, the Gyrocopter, Gyrocopter, and Shadow Shaman buy back. They have no Serpent Wards, though, as we mentioned. They get the tower now, a shackle out onto, sh onto the Juggernaut, but he just gets Astro that for safety. And away he goes. Hex out on OD. Can they stop this? Kaya once again is just deep zero. Gets shredded by that uh by the uh excuse me, the rocket bro. Ryo's gonna be able to run down the gyrocopter that's a dieback on him, aren't gonna have him. They channel the epicenter for good measure, put the damage into the the barracks. Shaq was out on OD, but OD is already, he still looks pretty healthy. Dark Raider gets a kill on the hero, but that was at the cost of the Shadow Shaman, who also fought back. Dark Raider wants to go on the OD. OD's got his BKB back now. They're able to Burrow Strike, but it catches the Lincolns instead. Hookshot forward on OD, buys a little bit of time, but now, uh, but now Clockwork has to get out of there. OD now up to 64 in stolen and drops the hammer. Pops the Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend's gonna buy back. They get the barracks. Now it's gonna be a three on one, but they claim their mega creeps, they get their prize, and they will go back home to gloat and reminisce about the good times. The fact that they're even leaving this open for discussion, the fact that they're not just pushing in every lane right now, with 56 seconds still waiting on the Gyrocopter, no buyback on Dark Raider. This That's a mystery. To me. Absolutely could come back to bite them. They're so scared about throwing their lead. They're really playing to not lose here. Yeah, but, you know, you have a buyback on the Juggernaut and the Sand King and the Beastmaster. Even if you, you get over-engaged, you still have a fallback on that buyback. Now, I don't think they should be sitting at the tier fours, but they should be pushing these lanes up together. One, either top or bottom, they should be there, just shoving it in so that the Megas are able to get there that much faster and and keep the Gyrocopter penned in. So Gyrocopter's gotta go for a Divine at this point, uh, I would imagine, but he doesn't really have any money, and the Megas aren't gonna give him much money. Yep, uh, yep. So, He's got it in his quick buy, of course, uh, but it's he's only got, yeah, 1,600 gold from all those buybacks. <laughs> the economic damage. How, how's that net worth going right now there, Gorgon? Yeah, it's uh, not looking as good as it was for one, you know. A once proud Stony Brook University is now chilling in the street looking for pen pennies. Uh, almost Radiant's started going into straight up old attack. English Dar Charles Dickens. I think uh, these guys uh, these guys invested in Bitcoin at the wrong time. That's what we're yeah, seeing right now. That's, yep, that's exactly what's going on. But, you know, there's always the chance that that inflates back up. With, with the gyrocopter, Mega's, forward. once again, not the end of the world, although we really have not seen value out of this Enigma, considering he bought a Hand of Midas in order to get himself three items to guarantee a black hole. Blink Dagger, Lincoln Sphere, BKB. Those items solely exist to get a black hole. A huge chunk of the team's net worth exists just so that black hole will be landed, and we have not been seeing black hole. Yep. There are the ones that have come out even uh, consistently. Like one just man getting the Sand King. The Sand Ooh. King, specifically. He hates that little bug. Yeah, 
Well, it, I don't know why. Usually the Sand King's still getting off the epicenter anyway, and even epicenter at this stage in the game is not really that much damage. Um, I, you know, there is the Veil of Discord on the Outworld Devourer, so it can stack up with that, but you really need to be getting the Juggernaut. Maybe the OD. Uh, ideally both. Sand King, not the ideal target. Yeah, and it's not like Alberta... Typically, when we see something like this, we, we would be giving big credit to Alberta for their positioning, um, just not allowing themselves to get themselves caught in a black hole, but I don't there think that's been, been the case. I mean, there has been a lot of, like, sprawling out in varied directions so that the black hole can only get two of them. They haven't been clumping too much, which has been good. But, you know, like you said, I don't think that's the, the major cause. I think the major cause is that the Enigma is Not having difficulty engaging with his team at the right time. Yeah, he's he's either caught out front or just he's always getting run down on the side by someone. It seems to be one of the big contributing things. If it's not caught out right in the back line, in the back line by a uh, by a a juggernaut, then it's just like kind of getting pecked at in the side so he can't get his blink in for that black hole. It's just uh it, this is the worst time in the game, too, because really we're looking at it and we're thinking U of A should be pushing. They have all their buybacks on cooldown. They have all their buybacks up. Their opponents are reeling with buybacks still not taken, and their gy opponent's gyrocopter is quickly trying to get up a Divine Rapier. This is the moment to be acting, and it's just painful to watch you be so, uh, you know, mousy about this. They're waiting for Roshan. They don't need to. Yeah, that gyro, he's got 4,300 gold now. He's so close. Now, we are going to be looking after this at double savage, or double primal war with a, an OD that has uh, actually double hammer. Double sanity's oh, eclipse. That's... Not what I would expect, but if these fights continue to go as long as they have been, you can kill an entire team. Yeah, OD has been stacking up some serious stolen intelligence in these fights. Uh, even even getting two BKBs off in the the last engagement because of how how extended it was. Who picked up the cheeses? Uh, it's not Jug. No, Jug has the cheese. No, he's got the Aegis. Oh, does he? My my quick buy middle. Is, oh, it's in his. Okay, so uh, apparently uh, there's a bug with the item side display. It's showing me that he has cheese. And TP, nothing in backpack. Interesting. Oh, Don't yeah, the cheese backpack. cheese and TP yeah. are in his backpack. Everything and else the... is in his inventory. So you're seeing his inventory as cheese TP. Not yes. the ideal uh, loadout for a 45-minute juggernaut. Yeah, definitely not not ideal. Um, and I was thoroughly confused, but now <laughs> everything makes sense. So the world is together again. How, let's do a Divine Rapier counter. It is not what he's going to buy anymore. He's going to go into a Satanic instead. Weird. Yeah, I guess, I mean, it's not that desperate, right? Uh, and he has been getting bursted down in these fights. Yeah, I suppose, you know, the theory is that the Enigma is supposed to open enough space that he can't be bursted down in these fights. Well, and... that that is the theory. We have not seen that happen so far. Therefore, let's let's itemize around that. Knowing what we're doing. He already drops the first the Sanity's Eclipse. They're gonna run down Sand King on their high ground. There we go. A one-man black hole. It's on the Juggernaut this time around. But he does have that Aegis, so he'll be back shortly, taking quite a while to kill. Selatos caught in his own. <laughs> what? He managed to make it out of the cogs, even though he's caught in the. They're not going to be able to catch him with the Ice Pass, so he is just out. Now, the fight just fragmenting a little bit. Alberta doing some damage. Oh, there we go. There's the second Sanities. Committed on yeah. the Shadow Fiend with no buyback now. Secured on Judge. They're going to shackle him up, but they don't have the damage. For a second, he's going to catch two. Now, Alberta here is just ready to run him down. Good game gets called. Absolutely should have saved his buyback there instead of getting the home of the Dominator. I'm not sure. Oh, wait. What, what did he buy? What did he buy? He lost all his gold. Buyback's not all down. Uh, 
He already had his. He already had his butterfly done, right? Must have been something on Courier. Uh, maybe he sent it out for a divine rapier. Oh, uh, yep. And it just didn't make it back in time for that fight. Uh, either way, a really nice comeback from Alberta. It they kept their cool. They made sure they were coming in a plum. And first of all, they didn't get tilted by the first game, which is in and of itself pretty astonishing. And then second of all, this game looked really, really bad. But throws are always possible in CSL, and the best CSL teams are the ones that are able to catch them. Yeah, I would say that was definitely Stony Brook's game to lose, and they showed us how it's done. Yeah, I think that that's a, a fair assessment. But we will uh, be back momentarily with game number three of the series, I believe. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab a quick break here, as I think some of the players are, and we will be right back.
You must remember this A kiss is still a kiss Remember this A kiss is still a kiss